Oh, hello YouTube. Today I'm the Naughty Librarian. I am doing my next Drunk Classics episode, continuing on with The Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. I have Memnock the Devil. So I want to give you guys a little insider information here. <laughs> I did originally film this over the course of three days when I was reading it. However, two of the days ended up blurry. Don't know how that happened. And uh, none of it made any sense. So here we are trying to refilm this today. <laughs> I figured I'm just going to do the whole thing today. Why not? Because frankly, this book is insane. It's, it's insane. Like, um, I can't, I I'm going to try my best to explain it to you. But yeah, a lot happens. So frankly, I think I'm just going to have a glass or two and try to summarize because like not enough cool vampire shit's going on. It's just really kind of, I don't know, an hallucinogenic fever dream with theological dread. So buckle up. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Brace yourselves. In the beginning of the book, it's about a year later after the end of Body Thief. And, um, and a body thief, um, Lestat and David and Louie all went on vampire vacation. I guess like Lestat got a case of the sads and he like left David and Louie in Brazil and he came home and he's just been wandering around. And um, he's also like low key convinced he's being stalked. Like he keeps getting stalked at this point. Like that was the premise of the last book. And they're like, let's do it again. So here we are. Lestat's getting stalked by like a presence and, he, and he's real freaked out about it. So he is having a pity party at this hotel and he, he calls David to come uh, visit because he's like, I need a friend because like I'm getting stalked and I'm sad. So um, he and David meet up at the hotel and they just kind of catch up for a little bit. And Lestat's telling David how he's been stalking his next, like, victim for, like, six months. Like, like pot and kettle, am I right? Like, he's getting stalked by a presence, but he's been stalking this other guy this whole time. I don't know. Anyway, he's been stalking this guy named Roger. And he's, like, obsessed with him. He's, like... I'm obsessed with him. He's like a criminal. He's like, um, like, like a criminal mastermind. He smuggles stuff. He does drugs. Like he smuggles drugs. He does all this kind of crazy stuff. And like his daughter, complete opposite. She's like a televangelist. So odd couple here. And he's kind of obsessed with both of them. He's like, how does this work? And he's just been stalking them. So, you know, he and David are talking, blah, blah, blah. They both decide to go get dinner separately and they're gonna meet back up later to talk about you know Lestat getting stalked by the devil that's what he feels like is happening so um tonight's the night Lestat he goes over to Roger's apartment he's gonna kill him tonight this is the day and and Roger's apartment is crazy it's like full of all these like religious relics and um all this stuff and he's just like wow this is strange and finally, Roger comes back and, and Lestat, like, greets him by <laughs> drinking all of his blood and killing him. So Roger's dead, like, immediately. And um, Lestat has to hide the body and he feels real proud of himself for doing it. He's like, look at me cleaning up after my messes. He goes back to, like, the hotel bar. And wouldn't you know, um, Roger's ghost is waiting for him in the bar. So now there's ghosts. And, and Lestat's being haunted by Roger's ghost. And frankly, I'm surprised this hasn't happened more often with all the shenanigans that Lestat gets into. He hasn't been haunted all the time. But no, just the first time he's being haunted, allegedly. <laughs> but Roger's there and he's like, listen, Lestat, you killed me. Like, it's fine, whatever. And they kind of like go through his whole life story and like how he was a hustler and like how he like made all this money and stuff but he really just did it because he wanted to protect his daughter and he's like listen people are gonna find out i'm dead and they're gonna find out i'm her dad and like shit's gonna hit the fan you can't let that happen you killed me you owe me you gotta watch after dora my daughter and lestat's like okay because like i'm kind of obsessed with dora too <laughs> i don't know how much of it is like the fact that he ate her dad and now like, you know, Roger's blood is in him that's making him more obsessed with Dora or he's just obsessed with Dora. There's like a combo of things going on here. Eventually Roger's spirit just kind of 
disappears. Next night he and David meet back up to like talk about things and he's like, David, I'm getting stalked by the devil and also now I got haunted by somebody. Like shit's getting real and David's like, what is your life? <laughs> David's like, okay, I'll help you. But like, it's always something with you, isn't it? <laughs> he and David, they go back to uh, like Roger's apartment and they collect all of the relics and everything. Cause there's some really expensive stuff in there. And it's supposed to be like Dora's inheritance. So they go collect everything to keep it safe for her because she doesn't really want any of Roger's money because like he's a criminal and she knows and she's a televangelist, but like she loves him. It's a whole like, complex father-daughter relationship here but Roger wants them to like take care of Dora so they go and collect all the stuff um and they like put it away for like safekeeping and uh eventually they just go back to New Orleans and they're like all right let's go home they check in um with Louie back at the apartment and Lestat goes to visit Dora because Dora actually lives in New Orleans as well she lives in like this old abandoned like convent which is like so goth and like so crazy <laughs> like the weirdest setting but anyway she lives there right and um so Lestati goes to the convent to like wait for Dora for reasons and like he starts getting freaked out again because the stalker is there he's like the stalker the presence the devil it's there and he's freaking out and the stalker finally starts talking to him and he's just like listen like we're gonna have to like get together tonight and he's like no let me talk to dora first we gotta do this and the stalker's like all right fine but like i'm getting you after <laughs> so i feel like the stalker's being relatively reasonable here dora comes home she sees lestat the stat has a panic attack about it because he's like oh my gosh i'm a vampire blah like he forgot and he and he hides and like dora's not really scared of him like she knows he's a creature she's like you're obviously not human but like she's so like holy that she's like not scared of him at all she's like oh it's okay like you know like some people are vampires some people are methodists you know <laughs> like she's just real chill about things and she's like hey like why are you in my house so let's daddy's just like listen i'm a vampire and also like i ate your dad sorry like he's dead now and I ate him and I really liked him. So I feel kind of bad about it. But like, I want to protect you because I feel very fatherly to you. And also your dad came back as a ghost and, and asked me to look after you. Like, this is just a lot to lay on a lady the second she walked through her door. <laughs> so she's like, okay, I need to need a minute on this. <laughs> so she's obviously like quite distraught, but like still takes it kind of like a champ. So he leaves and he just runs up into the night because he's trying to one, escape his stalker and two, lead the stalker away from Dora. But like, he's not gonna get away from the stalker. I'll tell you right now, he doesn't. They, they finally have their face-to-face -face talk. He's like, hey, guess what? My name is Memnock. I'm the actual devil. Like, I'm a fan of your work. I'd like to offer you a job. Do you want to come be my assistant? So Memnock offers to like, take him to heaven and hell and show him the whole cosmic truth in order for him to make it like an informed decision like do you want to be my assistant for railsies and like i've said before lestat doesn't have a sense of danger so he's like kind of reluctantly actually intrigued by this he's like hmm the literal devil wants to kidnap me hmm, maybe i'll do this like it's like oh my god lestat lestat <laughs> Don't make deals with the literal devil. Like, honey, honey, you've been around for a while. <laughs> like, I can't with him. But, like, Lestat, he still gets Memnock to agree to giving him, like, a day or two to, like, think it over. Like, does he want to go on a fever trip with the devil? Like, he's gonna have to take a minute and think, which is probably for the best. And Memnock, he's like, all right, fine. I've been waiting this long. What's another couple days? So Lestat, he goes, he's like, I need to talk about this to somebody. So he goes to David, because David, um, he, he's been around for a while too. He worked for the Talamasca. He knows stuff about this stuff. <laughs> so he goes to find David and David's actually hanging out with Armand. And like, we haven't seen Armand for like a minute, but he's the perfect vampire for this because Armand was like crazy religious. Like he ran his own religious vampire cult for a minute. So like, he goes and tells David and Armand, he's like, listen, listen, the devil is asking me to go on a field trip with him and to be his assistant. What do y'all guys think? <laughs> 
And, and both of them think Lestat is a grade A moron. They're like, how? How do you think this is going to work out well for you? Why would you make a deal with the devil? Like, Lestat, Lestat, sit down. You need, to, you need to go in the corner and think about what you're doing. Like, you need to go think. <laughs> like, they're very upset with him. But, you know, you can't tell Lestat nothing. So he's like, you know what? You guys don't know. You don't know. I'm gonna go ask Dora. She's a human and a televangelist. She'll tell me what to do. Which is like, all right, fucking whatever, Lestat. Instead of like, you know, knocking on Dora's door and sitting down and talking to her like a normal vampire slash person, he literally just kidnaps her and flies all the way to New York with a human. And he's just like, oh, bye, <laughs> New Orleans and New York straight away. And it's like, oh my gosh, Lestat. <laughs> Do you think Dora might be freaked out by this? But um, he brings Dora back to this place. Um, they had like an apartment thing where they've been storing all of like um, Roger's relics. So he brings her there and he's like, hey, this is all your dad's stuff. I need to tell you about some crazy shit that happened to me. And he tells her all about Memnock. And Dora's like, well, you know what? You're already a vampire and like you kill people all the time. So like, you don't really have a ton to lose <laughs> by going off with Memnock. Like you're a vampire and you're evil. Like." You would probably already go to hell anyway, so like, why would this be a surprise? Like, you know, hear him out. And it, I, honestly, it's not like the response I thought Dora was gonna give him, but like, Lestat's like, you told me exactly what I wanted to hear. Great, this is what I'm gonna do. So Lestat, he like summons Memnock, and uh, and they, they go off on a, on a field trip together. So first stop, heaven. Memnock brings Lestat there and it's just like this magical wonderland full of like colors you can't even imagine existing and harmony and all this kind of stuff and Lestat he even like briefly meets God but before Memnock he's like no 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 too much too soon <laughs> takes him out of heaven so it's like a quick little field trip over there just like to prove kind of like yay that exists yo like this is a thing so uh I mean if I'm like going off of Memnock's reasoning, it's probably best to start there because if you start with the bad stuff, he's not gonna wanna continue. So like, good planning on his part. And also Memnock really just wants to be able to explain his side of the story because you know, he's the devil. Like he, he's been around for a minute since creation itself. So he's like, hey, there's alternate thought processes here. Let me tell you my side of things. So then like for almost the entire book, we go on like religion's greatest hits tour. <laughs> like he just goes through like the creation process and how weird it was. And like, um, like I'm not gonna get into all of it because frankly, this is like 300 pages worth of stuff and irrelevant to the actual plot here. But basically it's a very long theological discussion um, about like how creation was and like the nature of like God and like he's like God was just always there and like he doesn't even think God really even knows where they came from. God just existed all of a sudden and didn't know where they even came from. So they did creation in order as like an experiment to see like if I create this will it evolve enough to also become God. Like it's like an experiment basically. This is I I am mind you very much condensing a lot of the book. <laughs> but frankly, it's just so long. <laughs> and um, then they go through the whole like process of like creation and its evolution. Like evolution was built into creation and like how things came to be. Like they were created as this in order for them to evolve into that kind of thing. And there's a lot of things that Memnock just doesn't agree with. Like the fact that, um, like creation has evolved into mo like humans because humans are intelligent enough to understand that God exists, but they don't have access to God. And like, it's a real bummer for them. And he's just like, why would you do that? Like you're just making people sad for no reason. And also um, humans like evolve into having a soul. Like that wasn't like a planned thing. And um, all of these souls exist after you know the people die and there's nowhere for them to go they just kind of stay 
and they just like walk around in Shadowland and they, they just go have nowhere to go. They just have nowhere to go. They're just doing nothing. And Memnock gets really mad about this. He's like, why would you create this and have these souls and then not give a fuck about them? Like you just leave them to rot? Like why bother? Why bother? So he really can't get over the fact that um, God seems to be indifferent to their creations. Like, God doesn't care. He's like, why, why would I care? I don't care about their souls. Like, I made them. I don't care. Like, whatever. They're just there. <laughs> like, God has, doesn't have a reason to want to do anything with it. And, like, Memnock is mad about it. Like, he can't get over the fact, and this is where their main divide comes from. Basically, guys, still being patient with Memnock until this point, and he's like, hey, okay, fine. You don't get it. I, I understand you don't get my reasoning here. How about you and all the angels who kind of feel like you? You all go down to Earth for a while and observe, and then eventually you'll get it. So they all go down the earth for a while. They're living amongst humans. Memnock is really trying to understand. He still doesn't understand. So he's down there for like a long time. And eventually he's like, you know what? I'm going to have to have a human body. The only way to really understand humanity is to become one. So he kind of wills himself to have a human body. So now he's like an angel in human form. And like, um, I was going to say, like immediately he meets like a hot girl and they like bang in a cave. Like he's like, oh my gosh, this sex thing? Like, God, you, this is some of your A plus work right here. <laughs> like, he's like, wow, that was amazing. Like sex, top notch stuff. Like, so he's like, wow, that was great. But God's like, are you kidding me? Damn it. No, you were supposed to go down there and start fucking people. You were supposed to just observe. So God's upset with him. <laughs> he's like, why are you fucking them? No, you stay down there. You think about what you did. So now he's kind of kicked out and he's stuck on earth in a human body. And, and Memnock is kind of just like, well, shit, now I'm stuck on earth. Well, I might as well help them, I guess. So he's basically like the, the beginning of all of modern civilization is Memnock. He's like, hey, you know what? If you build this thing, it's easier to water your crops or, or it's easier to like make fire or like, hey, this house, you can live inside of it and then you won't get rained on and stuff. Like he's literally giving civilization to humanity. So he's like, he's like a great guy. He's like helping a lot. And um, he's there for a while and God eventually comes and gets him. He's like, all right, come back up here. Let's talk. I, I've calmed down. <laughs> and, he, and God's like, hey, Memnock, hear me out. I've had a great idea. Hell, what do you think? Like, I'm going to invent it. And like, Memnock is like, what? Why would that be your idea? Like, I have been telling you that human souls are worthy of coming and living up here with us in heaven because like, they have thoughts and feelings and they're all part of you and they should come up here. And your thought is to invent hell. <sighs> like, you know, I'm really trying to understand your reasoning here, but I, I don't. Like, like Memnock finally like, is kind of very upset with them. He's like, no, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. How? How do you think this is a good idea? So God's like, all right, fucking fine. Go down to Earth and go hang out with all of the human souls down there, the millions of them that are just piling up. Go find like 10. 10. The minimum is 10. Go find 10 of them you think can come up here. They're worthy of it. Go ahead. Fine. Show me up then. And Memnock's like, all right, I will. Mind you, Memnock probably should have asked for more instructions than just go find 10 souls. What is the criteria? Doesn't have any. He's going to have to just figure it out. So he's down there playing with souls for like a long time, like probably like a thousand years at least. And, and he's just winging it. He's like, um, I don't know. Because a lot of souls down there are just confused or they're uh, miserable because, you know, they're stuck in a shadow realm. And, and finally he finds some really bright souls and he's like, ooh, ooh, look at them souls. So he goes over and he talks to them. He's like, hey, what's up? Why do you guys seem all like chill? And they're like, ah, we're good. You know, we realize that uh, God created us and did this to us, but like, we're fine. We, we've forgiven. We've forgiven him for doing it. Like, we're happy to have lived at all. And we've made our peace with things. So they're kind of at peace. So uh, Memnock's like, this is the fucking ticket. Yes. How many of you are? Like, like 10,000 of you? Great. You're all coming up with me. So he brings like 
10,000 souls up to heaven. <laughs> like, you're, you're like, oh, you wanted 10? I brought 10,000. And like, you bring them all up, they're there. Everything goes crazy. Like, all of a sudden, like, all of the human thoughts change the landscape. And now there's like buildings and libraries and all this crazy shit. And all the angels are like, what? Who are these people? <laughs> like God's like what have you done so like, but God's like all right you know I said what I said and you kind of figured it out so all right I guess they can stay you did a good job go relax but Memnock's like but like no, no I'm not I'm not done like there's gonna be more souls you're just gonna leave them still and God's like yeah I don't give a shit and like Memnock loses it finally he's like you know what you're a dick and like he finally just has it out and, and, and God's just finally really pissed he's like no you're not gonna call me a dick this is my fucking house homie so he kicks him out he's like bye you're banished Pfft, kicks him out so this is like you know the fall essentially so Memnock he falls from heaven um he's kicked out and he just wanders around earth for a really long time he's still super in like confused and doesn't understand why God can be so indifferent and mind you, I don't think I've made this clear, but um, Lestat is on this journey with Memnock. Memnock is literally showing him the whole journey like it's a movie and he's moving throughout time with him. So like Lestat has been watching all this as well. And, and we get to a point now in the story where things get like weird, weird. <laughs> because now it's the time of Jesus. And uh, Memnock, he meets Jesus and he's like, oh my gosh, God, you became a person. Like I mentioned you should do this because I became a person and I figured out a lot of stuff and you took my advice. And um, he's like, yeah, you know, like for a while I forgot it was God, but now I remember I'm God. And like, I figured a lot of stuff out, you know, but I'm like, maybe you had a point. I'm gonna go get crucified. And then people who believe the story of this get to come to heaven. Like, because you know what? Life is about suffering. And um, I'm not just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, have you not been listening to me at all? Do you not under like, are you okay? Who hurt you? Like, life isn't about suffering. Life is about like being happy and experiencing creation and loving and like ex and like loving everything about life. Like, that's the point of it. Why do you want them to suffer more? And God's like, don't worry about it. And he's like, no, I'm gonna worry about this like a whole lot. They have another like bone deep disagreement about this. Where Memnock's like. Why are you like this? Who? Why? How? How? <laughs> like, I'm still mad at him. And he really tries to talk him out of this. It's like, no, no, you can't. No, this is going to be bad. Do you know the shit they're going to get into because of this? You can't do this. And he's like, I'm going to do it anyway. And um, then like Memnock and Lestat, they go and watch the crucifixion. And uh, okay. And like, here's the thing. Like, they're outside of time, but they're inside of time in a way because Jesus meets Lestat. Lestat gets to meet Jesus. And Jesus is like, hey, listen, I'm literally carrying my cross to go get crucified. Why don't you drink some of my blood? I don't know why he would be into this. But, like, Lestat's like, I don't think I should do this. But, like, can I? <laughs> and, like, Jesus is like, yeah, come drink some. So he drinks Jesus' blood. Like Lestat, Lestat, like he keeps drinking high octane blood all the time. I don't know how that's going to change him long term, but he literally just drank God's blood. Okay. And then you see like the creation of like St. Veronica's veil. Like you see that happen. And then Jesus gives it to Lestat. He's like, hey, you hold on to this. And Lestat's like, oh, okay, it's a holy relic. And like he keeps it like in his pocket. So like now he has St. Veronica's veil and he drank God's blood. Like I said, guys, this is a weird fucking book. <laughs> Mind you, we're like only maybe two thirds of the way through it. So we got a lot to go still. So after the crucifixion, we now just go on like um, Christianity's greatest hits of carnage tour. And like all of the human suffering that has existed because of this moment. And a lot of it is like just built around like religion existing in general, organized religion and like he, it's like a whole thing. I'm not going to get into all the things they go see, but it's a lot of atrocities one after another. So check trigger warnings if you need them because it's a lot. <laughs> but I'm like, wow, greatest hits of Carnage tour. And Memna's like, 
I told him this was gonna happen. Did you see me tell him this was gonna happen? I told him. I told him this. Did it anyway. Carnage for centuries. Beats me. Like, so Memnock is a little upset. <laughs> and because of this, like, whole, like, greatest hits of atrocities, like, it's fucking up the souls even more because even fewer of them actually get to go to heaven now unless they're, like, you know, super holy pure. They get to go to heaven but like most souls don't get to go anywhere they just stay in the shadow realm because they're miserable he's creating more misery which makes souls suffer memnock is pissed he's like do you see what i mean do you, do you see what i've been telling you like you, you get it right you get it listat tell me you get it <laughs> we have the big final fight now because like memnock already got the cast out of heaven fight this is the the, the double down fight so he and god they're like fighting memnock's like yeah and he's like you're a dick, you suck, I want nothing to do with you. Like, I can't understand you, I will never understand you, I think you're wrong. And God's like, well, fine, you love human souls so much, why don't you marry him? Go be the ruler of hell, you rule all these, like, un untethered souls, you're their ruler now, go deal with them. Like, if you want to help them so bad, go help them. Help them, like, get to the place where they can come to heaven, that's your job, bye, go fuck off. So it's one of those fights, and Mamnock's like, you know what? Fine, I fucking will. Suck my dick. It's one of those. It's like, you know, it's it's like they have a very hard disagreement that they're not gonna like ever resolve. So now we get to the big climactic moment with Lestat. So Mamnock's like, do you see what I mean here? Like, you saw the whole thing, right? Like, tell me I'm wrong. You can't, right? Like, Am I wrong? I don't think I am. You've seen my side of the story. So here's the crux of my decision. I need an assistant. I have been managing hell for a long time. I'm trying my best. I've made it into a place where souls can like have time to accept their suffering and then, you know, forgive God. So they get to go to heaven. It's like, it takes a while and it's a lot. And like, it's a lot. I need help. Like, I can't do this on my own anymore, so, like, be my assistant. And the stat's like, um, I don't know for sure yet. So Memnog's like, all right, let's go to hell then. Let's go see what's going on. And I'll tell you right now, oh boy, it does not go well. Like, Lestat is horrified because you have just, like, massive souls suffering just it's just a land of suffering Lestat is overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of it and he's just like oh no 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 it's like I get it like I get why like I was being a dick and I get your point but like I don't think this is the solution to it just to have a pool of suffering like you're not helping homie you're both wrong like I don't want to deal with you um I I don't I don't want to deal with this at all like I'm running away now bye and so like he tries to run out of hell he's like nope not dealing with this so he's running away he's like i don't want to be your assistant i decline la 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 he's running trying to get out of hell and like technically he's not dead so he doesn't have to stay in hell he can he can leave if he wants but like he also has veronica's veil in his pocket and memnock's like oh no 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 you're not allowed to leave with that so like memnock is chasing him and they kind of get into a fight and memnock means to just grab lestat's like hair but Lestat like turns his head at the same time and Memnock accidentally rips Lestat's eyeball out. And he's like, oh no, ew! <laughs> like Memnock's like, oh no, oh no, I didn't mean to do that, oh no. So like Memnock freaks out because he didn't mean to rip a guy's eyeball out. And he's like, oh shit, oh sorry, uh, bleh. <laughs> It's like a whole whoops. <laughs> but in all of the confusion of Memnock going, ew, gross! And then like all the souls going like, blah, like they're freaking out too. So Lestat just escapes. So now Lestat has escaped hell and he's back on earth and he's just like, ah, <laughs> like he's freaking out. He's missing an eyeball. He doesn't know what to do. He's like, oh shit. Okay. 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 Um, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll go talk to Dora. Blah. And so he runs off and he goes to the apartment where Dora is and, and David and Armand are there too. They've been like looking after Dora because they knew Lestat was like really fatherly like attached to her so they've been like doing him a solid so they've been staying with Dora and like keeping an eye on her and Lestat shows up right and he looks awful <laughs> like he's like filthy he's covered in dirt he is missing an eyeball he has weird blood stains everywhere and everyone's like what the fuck Lestat what the hell happened and Lestat's like I don't know I've had a bad day 
I don't know. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> oh, he goes to bed and he wakes up like, you know, the next night when like the sun goes down. And he's like, all right. Okay. I think I'm ready. I have my shit together. Let's talk. So he goes out and he's with Dora and Armand and David and he tells them the whole story the whole thing and and Armand and Dora way into this because they're always they're already super religious so they're like oh my gosh oh my gosh so cool and Armand's like can I try some of your blood if you have god blood in it can I try some and, and Lizette's like no bro bro I just got back not right now <laughs> so um they're having this whole thing and and David's still a little skeptical of it and he's like all right fine here Here's this. And he gives him Veronica's veil, which is, you know, a holy relic. It's like Jesus's face print of his blood. So um, Dora and Armand are like, oh my gosh, this is a holy relic. And they freak out. They're like, oh, gasp. You know, they're like really into this veil. This is a holy relic. So Dora's like freaking out about it. She's like, yeah, I have the veil. She runs out. She goes to this church. And I guess the church is in service right now. And she's like, I have Veronica's veil. Look at the veil. I have the veil. And um, everyone's like freaking out. Everyone's like, oh. and everyone just believes it. Cause like, it's a holy relic. Like you see it, you believe it. And um, so everybody's like, it, it hits the news. It's all around the world now. And Armand is right there with Dora. And he's like, oh my gosh, it's the holy relic. I've seen it. Um, you know what? I'm going to back up to story. I'm going to walk out into the dawn and just self emulate. I'm going to, it's going to be a miracle. So like Armand decides to go catch fire in the dawn as a miracle for some reason. And honestly, that was just the start. Okay. Shit keeps getting weirder because like it hits the news. It's all around the world. Everybody knows about this holy miracle that just happened. More vampires start showing up every day to self emulate like in front of the church. So it's just like, it's a whole thing. And I'm like, maybe stop setting your guys selves on fire. I don't know how this is helping, but all right, whatever. But luckily in all of this, David still has his shit together and he's taking care of Lestat because Lestat just went through heaven all of time, Christianity's greatest hits of atrocities and hell and came back. He's a little fucked up. <laughs> so like David's taking care of Lestat and also trying to get to the bottom of what happened. So like David is the best friend Lestat's ever had. Frankly, I'm a big fan of David. He's great. And also David is trying to figure out more parts of the story too, because like David listened to all of that and he has his own opinions on it, but he's just like, but like, was it real? Is this a con job? Who actually is Memnog? What is going on with all of this? There's a whole chaos that's happening now. Was it supposed to happen that way? What was the point of this? Like David's asking like logical questions. And so he's still taking care of Lestat. They're at home in New Orleans and they go visit the old convent that Dora owned and, and all of Roger's relics got moved to this convent. I don't know when that happened, but it happened. They were in New York, but now they're back in New Orleans in the convent. And Lestat, he, he finally reunites with Louis and Louis is like, Hey bro, how you doing? Like Louis kind of taking care of him too. Um, and Lestat's happy that he's Louis and he has David because I feel like they're like in a thruple, a vampire boyfriend thruple. And I'm obsessed with it. Please let this be real. I want that canon so bad. David, Louis, Lestat, vampire thruple. But you know, Lestat is a little like loony bin right now. He's like a little out of it. He's like lost his mind a bit. He's like not making a lot of sense. So they're all in the convent and Maharet shows up. So we met Maharet back in Queen of the Damned. She is like one of the oldest vampires on earth. And her sister is the actual queen of the damned. So like old shit going on here. And she shows up and she's like, hey, Lestat, guess what? Memnot gave me this letter for you. So here you go. And like Lestat, he opens the envelope and there's a little note in it. But guess what else is in that envelope? Guess what it is? Lestat's eyeball. Memnot brought it out of hell for him. He's like, hey, I feel bad about your eyeball. Here you go. Here's your eyeball back. I, sorry. Um, but on, on the bright side, hey, thanks for doing a great job. Job well done. Thanks, bud. And so Lestat puts his eyeball back in so he's got an eyeball again. <laughs> but like also, it adds, just, it adds more questions to this because David reads the note too and he's just like, what does this mean? Was this supposed to happen? Is this a con job? We don't really get any answers. It's all very ambiguous. And, and Lestat, he, he puts his eye, you know, he has his eyeball back, but it doesn't mean his brain is better because he's still like 
out of it. Like he, he went through a lot. He needs time for his brain to like function again. Like he's a little crazy right now. So Maharet's like, listen, Lestat, you are out of your damn mind. Um, I'm taking you prisoner for a minute. And like, that's like the fuck you are. She's like, uh huh, I am. You're crazy. I can't have a crazy vampire running around the streets. I can have a fool. No, chain him up, boys. So she gets him all chained up and they put him in the basement until he can get his shit together. Like he needs some time to not be running around being a crazy person. So like, it, I mean, it's probably for the best, but like it could have been done nicer, <laughs> like, you know? So he basically just gets chained up in a basement for a while until like he can like comprehend everything and like have his like brain heal enough to the point where he's not like, like crazy. So um, Louis and David, they visit him all the time. And um, then eventually just one day Lestat, he wakes up and the chains are off and he's just like, oh, I, I guess I can leave now. So <laughs> he just leaves the church, goes home to uh, the apartment with Louis and David. And he's like, all right, later gators. <laughs> like that's, that's the end of the book. There you go. He got chained up in a basement for a while and just woke up one day and left the church because he wasn't chained up anymore. Memnock the devil, everybody. Like, I just, it's a lot. It's a lot to go through. Like, it's just a cocaine fever dream of a theological dread. And it's a lot. And it doesn't have enough cool vampire stuff. Like, it has, like, like you know, um, Lestat gotta drink Jesus's blood. So there was that. But that's really weird. And I didn't even bring up the gross stuff. Like, I don't even think I should but like, I'll just tell you right now, Lestat is oddly obsessed with period blood. I'm just gonna put that out there. Oddly obsessed with period blood. You can make with that what you will. <laughs> like, there's so much talk about it in this book. Yeah, we're gonna move past that. Anyway, everybody, I read that. Drank a couple glasses. Told you what happened. I figured let's just do the abbreviated version of this rather than like hurt my liver. <laughs> anyway, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I don't know, what's another book you read that was just so weird? You're like, this is like a fever dream. Like it makes no sense, this is crazy. Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you wanna see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And if you want cool exclusive content, like a book club, for example, you can consider becoming a channel member or a patron. The links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I will see you guys soon. Bye.